So, hello guys, welcome to another podcast. Hello, Gabby, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you, Alex? I'm great. Um, today, we're going to be talking about some other topics that we couldn't finish the last time that we were doing the podcast. And um, I want you to let us know the first topic that we were discussing behind cameras, which is the Sika in Cuba. Exactly. There are so many people asking, how's the dengue situation? Dengue's? Dengue situation in Cuba, Sika, whatever, when it comes to mosquitoes. And uh, I think you found an article. Yeah. Let me, let me, what you can tell about that. Yeah. I found an article because the question was, what's the status on Zika in Cuba? And Zika is not uh, the actual problem. Last year in 2022 was the dengue situation very, very hard in Cuba. And the embassy of the United States make an article like health alert U.S. Embassy Havana on August of 2022. And they say a surge of dengue, 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 whatever, <laughs> dengue, guys. Fever has been confirmed in Cuba. Dengue is spread to people through the bite of an infected mosquito, specifically the Aedes aegypti. Mm -hmm. And the actions to take that they recommend is use Environmental Protection Agency, APA, registered insect relevance. This is one of the most important things when you travel to Cuba, because the situation here with all the mosquitoes and in places like Trinidad and Viñales, with the, I don't know if there is any word in English for jejen, jejenes, maybe it's just jejenes. <laughs> The, uh, these, uh, these bugs are not exactly like the mosquitoes, but are very, very uh, annoying. So it's important to have this repellent with you. This uh, another topic that we are going to talk in some videos about the things that you really need to, to bring with you if you came to Cuba. The other thing that they uh, recommend, it's dress in light clothing that covers the arms and legs. It's very important because uh, most people say that the uh, dark clothes attracts the mosquitoes. I don't know exactly how mm -hmm. this work. Well, cover strollers and baby carriers with mosquito netting. Important too. And reapply insect repellent as directed. Do not spray repellent on the skin under clothing. And if you are also using sunscreen, apply sunscreen first and insect repellent second. They also talk about treat clothing, but this is not so important here. And take steps to control mosquitoes indoors and outdoors. The number one, use screens on windows and doors. Repair your holes in screens to keep mosquitoes outdoors. Aedes species can live their entire life cycle indoors and are often found in closets, bathrooms, and under beds. So consider use of a spray insecticide in these areas. They also say use air conditioning if, if available in the place that you're in your accommodation, in your casa particular, in the hotel, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the, the symptoms too. Symptoms of dengue usually being within two weeks after being bitten by an infected mosquito. So you have to see a healthcare provider. If you develop a fever or have symptoms of dengue, take acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. Also, it's, this is very important because the only uh, pill that you have to, to take in these cases is the acetaminophen because the aspirin or the ibuprofen no, uh, they work, but if you have dengue, aspirin and ibuprofen thin the blood and may increase the risk of bleeding. So it's very, very difficult to, I don't know, to control this uh, hemorrhagia bleeding, mm -hmm. this bleeding in this case. And also it's a uh, bleeding dengue, a specific uh, mutation of this... Uh, sickness. Exactly, of this sickness. So it's very, it's very... Difficult. I don't know. I think that um, many people, if they were like asking about this, it's because they think that Zika or Dengue, whatever, is like very common nowadays in Cuba. Yeah. It is, but it's not like you're going to be walking by and you're going to find Dengue everywhere. I think mm -hmm. it depends about the activities that you're going to do, where you're going to be staying, how is, it, is it going to be the, the quality of the trip. If you're going to stay in a luxury place with air conditioner all the time. Exactly. Uh, you're not going to have that. But if you're going to be hiking or you're going to be looking for some crazy adventures like we do, yeah, <laughs> you need to look for some um, like um, stuff and insecticides. Yes, and bring some medicine just in case because you never know. Exactly. So thank you for, for the information. It's very helpful. Yeah. On the other side, 
we were uh, having another topic that it was very important that we wanted to talk about, which is... Yeah, it's about the scams in Cuba. Hmm. This is a controversial topic, very interesting. Okay, guys, I want to say hello to our members from the United States, from Canada, from United Kingdom and Poland, which are the main audience that we have and the rest of you guys who are watching the channel. Uh, thank you as well and welcome aboard. And a special thanks to the people from Toronto, from New York, from London, from LA, from Chicago and Dallas that are for most of our viewers or our views come from. And uh, where are you from? Let us know in the comments down below. We need to know so we can do this in every podcast. So we can thank you again for watching and consuming this video podcast. If you're new here, you can support the channel by going to buymeacoffee.com. That's going to be the best way that you have to support the channel. And it's going to be cheaper than probably a cup of coffee that you will pay in the country that you're watching this from. My name is Alex Rodriguez and Gabby, and we both are creating this valuable content for you guys about Cuba so far, but we're trying to implement some international topic. If you want to do that, go to buymeacoffee.com. And if you're planning to visit Cuba and you would love to have us to help you organizing your trip, go to amcurlin.com, which is going to be the best platform to use when it comes to traveling to Cuba and know the culture of Cuba. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and listening to this video podcast and see you guys in the next one. Ciao, Pecao. So we were talking about the scams um, and we were talking about some places that for me is one of the most important things when it comes to traveling, scams, things that you should avoid. And in Havana, there's a place called La Favorita, La preferida. <laughs> in English, it would be something like uh, the favorite, something like that. And it's in Old Town, and it's one of the most famous places when it comes to be scammed. Exactly. Because they're going to take you there, they're going to tell you that's going to be the um, Bodeguita del Medio, which yeah. is not. And if you don't know anything about Havana, if you don't know anything about Cuba, you can get scammed. So this place is very close to your house. Yeah. What do you know about this place and why, and how people should avoid these situations? Well, the most common people that came to, to this place, basically they are walking in Obispo or maybe in Havana in general, and some person come and say, hey, I will bring you to the most amazing place in Havana, so come with me. Um, people that don't look like... Uh, I don't know, the trustful would be the, the word? Yes. Trustful people. They look very, very bad. And it's not like, okay, we don't have to judge. judge by the appearance. But yes, we have to judge by the appearance when you're in a play in a, in a country, different you don't country know. Yeah. in a different town. In You have to be very, very careful with that. And also, these places have a lot of bad comments in their page. So if you just, okay, what's the name of the place that you say they will be very, very good to me? Oh, it's La Preferida. If you search on the internet, like I'm going to do right now, mm -hmm. La Preferida, Cuba, you will find tons of bad comments about this place with one star. And if you go to the page, you will find, for example... Actually, this place is very known for the prostitution. Yeah. yeah they have 10 comments and all with one star, the minimum. Oh. <laughs> We're going to show... Can you can you please get a screenshot so we can show this here? Perfect. I'm okay, going I'm going to put here in the video podcast. If you want to watch this, go to... Um, in, um, on, on YouTube, and you're going to watch the video podcast. So we're going to put the screenshot about the place, all the information, so you can know exactly where the place is located and all the rates. Well, this guy, uh, eight months ago, say, drink like drugs, people friendly like dogs. It's not Cuba. Yeah. And this one say, let me... Oh, the other review here is 100% true. We were tricked into going there twice and saw pricing that was very reasonable, so promised to come back. Both times, it was friendly people walking down the street, eager to hear about where you've traveled from and so on. When we finally went back for the dreams, we'd been promised were the best in Havana and most affordable. Again, the first menu stayed they were no more than 250 CUP each drink ended up being 
500 CUP, almost twice what we paid at Touristy Bar Floridita. As we sat, there watched multiple friendly neighbors bring tourists into sign a famous wall and scan them into drinks. Avoid at all costs this place, gives these lovely people and owners of other bars in the area a bad name. I, from my experience as a tour guide, I can tell you right now, actually, I'm going to do it. I can tell you right now what is going to be the speech of the people who's, who's going to try to scam you. When you come to Havana, and you probably know this, you walk by and they're going to tell you, for example, if they see they're pretty white, they're going to be like, Europe <laughs> or Canada. They just want to start a conversation. Yeah. If you say, oh, yes, or oh, no, that's already a conversation. You're following up. So what you have to do in this case is to ignore them. Because if you say yes or no, whatever, or if you say yes, they're going to be like Toronto or France. And if they keep going and you keep the flow, that's going to be very dangerous because they're going to be like, first time in Cuba, what's your name? Um, my name is Victor. Hey, Victor, welcome to Havana. Do you know that today is the Cigar Festival Day? <laughs> This is the day if you want to buy Cuban cigars. I actually work in the factory and I can give you 50% off because, you know, they make a lot of cigars and they give me some so I can take home and I can sell them. I can take you to the best place and it's going to be only 50% off. They were trying off. to make like a real connection with yeah, yeah, you. Yeah. Like, you're my friend, I'm going to help you and everything. So. I don't understand how people can trust these people. Actually, for example, let's say that you and I were traveling to another place. And we see a situation like this. I will tell you, Gabby, Google this, this place or Google exactly. if we were in a real festival. Because I don't trust people I don't know, you know. And another thing they're going to be telling you is like, have you ever tried a Cuban food? I know the best place to do that. Or have you ever tried a Cuban rum? I can take you to get some beers, some rum, whatever. That's going to be a scam. Yeah. So if they say, hey, today is the festival. Google the festival. You're going to find that it's going to be in February. If they say today is the South South Festival, whatever, Google, because they're going to be taking you to some places to dance, but maybe you have to pay and you, they're going to get... remember the Guantanamera Festival. It was like, what the... What? Yeah, yeah. They're going to take you to some places to get commissions, but you can say, no, thank you. No, thank you. I don't want anything. But or just ignore them. That's going to be the best advice. I don't know why people, they want to be like warm. They want to be kind. Sometimes with these people specifically, you shouldn't be as kind because you don't know, you know, and if you, I'm walking by, I don't want to be interrupted exactly. or bothered by people like this. No, thank you. I don't want anything. Exactly. And if I don't ask for any help, why do you talk to me and mm -hmm. give me all these? But the problem comments. is that people think that in Cuba, you're going to find this all the time. Cuban people are very warm. They are, but don't trust anyone like exactly. unless you're going to for example if you're going to a party because the house of the place that you're going to go there say hey this is a party maybe you can trust that people i wouldn't say no but i wouldn't say yes it depends if you see that the house of the place you're going to be staying at is like a very i don't know i would say mm, kind kind of but it depends i don't know if i would go you know the same with the, with the street i would never buy something on the street no I will go so. to some places, famous places that I know probably are going to be a little more expensive, but I rather prefer to be buying stuff with a good quality and a good price or a balance than going for the ship. Because sometimes when you go to ship places or you try to find cheap stuff like 15% off when it comes to buying cigars, things like this happen. And that's why it's so important to make a, a research before traveling to any place, even if in the same country that you live, because if you know why, where is the Bodeguita del Medio, for example, or what looks like you, when you came to this place and you looked at, okay, this is not the Bodeguita del Medio, for yeah. example. And if you uh, talk with a local, with your host, and they say, okay, uh, the exchange rate of money, it's like 120, and it depends in the official sites of the of the state. When you're walking in the street and they say, oh, with, for $1, I will bring you like 100 CUP, you say no. That's a completely a scam. Like the story that you told me before. Exactly. I think all this comes along to traveling with no idea of the place that you're going to be traveling to. When you travel to, for example, 
I'm going to go for a trip tomorrow. I'm going to a whole game. I already have like a plan of the places that I want to go. I already have like a review of the places that I want to go. I really know the people I can trust or the things that I can do, you know, at least. Because yeah. if you travel to Cuba, just because you know that Cuba is very friendly again or Cuba is very warm, whatever, you shouldn't go with no idea. Try to go for the places that you want to visit. Look for the reviews on TripAdvisor or Booking.com, whatever. Or just be in touch with some locals. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's the best way. Because if you search on Google about, I don't know, the current exchange chain, for example, it will be a very old information. Oh, yeah. So if that's you talk, another very, yeah. If you talk with a local, maybe with you. I saw your post on Instagram and I say, oh, Alex, I can keep touch with him. Um, let him know all the doubts that I have. And you say, okay. The exchange currency is like this, and you don't have to go to this place. And if you stay in Cuba, you shouldn't do this. It's uh, the best way because the local knows, the local mm -hmm. lives in the place, lives in the country. So the best advice is rain from the locals. And, the, and it's very easy to go to Instagram, for example. Exactly. You go to uh, hashtags, you go Cuba or travel to Cuba. You're going to see people visiting Cuba or they have visited Cuba recently. Do a research. Hey, I see that you have been in Cuba last week. What can you tell me about this? People don't like doing that. And if you don't like that, try to go for a coaching service or someone who's going to be helping you. You have to pay because you're getting information. Exactly. On quality information. Yeah. But I will prefer paying than being a scam. Exactly. You it's will, going to be even more expensive. Yeah, you will lose more money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, guys following up and if you want to get some travel tips we have some travel tips in amcurlyin.com we have a blog and i have a friend of mine who is trying to uh update in this uh we're going to be posting a lot about the places that i visit the gabby visits and uh if you want to know more about that that's going to be a very trust and actually we have a video the five things you shouldn't do if you visit cuba mm -hmm. that talks uh, these topics like the scams and the people in the street and the change money so mm -hmm. it will be very helpful for the people yeah, yeah, sure. we have a very interesting topic here be a soul as a transfer solution or taking a taxi instead that was because uh i wanted to talk about that because many people ask me Now with the gas situation, and if you don't know anything about Cuba so far, Cuba is passing through a very critical situation when it comes to gas, gasoline. And nowadays, Alex, what is going to be the best transfer option or, I don't know, the best way to travel within the Iceland? I would say Via Sul because it belongs to, to the government. And uh, I mean, you're going to be supporting the government. That's completely true. But that's the only way that you have, unless you want to pay a lot of money. Because if you want to go for a private service, it's going to be expensive because you need to rent a taxi. If you want to go for a collectivo, it's going to be expensive as well because it's going to be cheaper than getting a private taxi, but it's going to be expensive because they are going to be buying the gasoline. Um, you know, now they have the, like, uh, the, the ticket, whatever, but they still have not enough. So they're going to be buying the gasoline on the street yeah and the liter it's like a uh, 1000 cup so yeah it's crazy now yeah so i would advise you to get via Sul, but you need to do it on time ahead like one month 15 days it's not like you're just people land to havana they go to via Sul and they want to get the ticket for tomorrow no. that's not going to happen cuba don't work like yeah. that giving people like me for example as a local i would go to via Sul in this in this time nowadays is very easy is in mlc or in this case would be euros or dollars but is the best way it's the cheapest and uh that's is if you want to save some money if you come here and you want to rent a taxi that's and i hear you. about that you have to make the like the reservation uh, if you are outside of the country i don't know you can do it here when yeah. i went to Cayo coco i i i did it from canada from yeah. a friend of mine But um, you can go to the to the bus station, okay. which is in in Novedal, I think. That's what is the 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 avenue? That's Boyero, I think. Yeah. So you can get there, and you can say, "Hey, I want to go to whatever is the city that you want to they want to go." They're going to tell you the price, and you can pay. Oh. Yeah. But you need to pay again in MLC or any other international currency. Okay. So, but in this case, you need to do it in time. That's why I would recommend you to do that. Yeah, it's the same with the accommodations. For example, if you first came here to Havana and then you want to go 
to Vinales, for example, mm -hmm. or Trinidad. You have to make the Airbnb reservation, the TripAdvisor reservation, before traveling to Cuba, because when you are here, you can do all the, the payments, or you can even enter in Airbnb to make the reservation. So you have to be very careful with this, and plan ahead, and have everything in mind. And now that you talked about the Airbnb, I yeah. wanna, I wanna do, I wanna have like a point here. I have, yeah. I, I had a, a couple of clients. Yeah. They came from Utah. And Mark, if you're listening or watching this, this is for you, my friend. <laughs> He came and he was in Airbnb. He saw a very nice place. It was actually nearby here. And uh, once he came here, that I picked them up at the airport. And once we got to the to the Airbnb, I had no clue about that place. It wasn't on our current lane. They did it by themselves. And once I was there, it was a solar. It was pretty dark, pretty like you. If you go there. As Cuban, you would say like, what the heck is this? And they were like, wow, this is not what I saw Whoa. on Airbnb. And the price was extremely expensive compared to the quality that we had. Actually, they had AC, but it was the old version. So it was like, mm, all the time. Oh. It was very like inside of a hall with many people next to you. It was a very local vibe, but very local. I mean, like you could have like a Santero next to you like tum -ba -tum -ba -tum 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 -tum, all day which is crazy and they were like okay should we move alex and i say okay bro if you want to do this and the pictures on airbnb was completely different it was a place but they were selling another place but I'm, I'm gonna get there they were like alex what do you recommend should we move because we will like this i mean this is local vibe but it's pricey and i was like it's up to you bro what do you want to do? Do you want to like? Do you want to leave the the Cuban vibe? Okay, stay here because if, for the same price you can get another fancy place, but it's not going to be like this. It's going to be probably a place with a terrace, with a terrace or a place where you can have another life, no local like this one. Probably yeah. that's why they're going to be pricey because they they want you to sell this, but I would never pay this much. And it was like, okay, we're going to stay here. They stayed there. It was okay. They enjoyed. It. But um, the point is, when you look for Airbnb, like we did when we went to yeah uh, to, to Canasi, I was looking at the pictures, but at the same time, we were talking to the house. Hey, send me the actual yeah. pictures. And actually, once they sent us the pictures, it was not the same. No. Once once we got there, they were not uh, like the swimming pool in the there outside. There was no pool. Uh, there was no fancy place it was all destroyed and it was super complicated so tell the host this is a great advice tell the host send me a current photo of the place like right now yeah. are you there yes send me a photo right now with you in front of the place <laughs> i want to know that that photo is risen like the burial uh, yeah, yeah, yeah i don't want to be scammed please i have like had this situation before please send me the photos because people are going to be trying to they're going to try to sell you the best yeah. which is obvious but at the end they're gonna be hurting like the princess because if i go there and i haven't see a place that i was that i was sold is very difficult for me to give you a review or whatever i'm gonna say hey this is not the place that i saw on airbnb so i would highly recommend you to to ask for some recent yeah, and ask everything every doubt that you have maybe if you travel for a month or more time i don't know a Ask the host if they have like a washing machine, everything. Because oh, yeah, yeah. maybe you are like, okay, they have it. I don't have to ask. And when you go there, they don't have any washing machine, for example. Mm -hmm. And you have to look outside and you don't have to. It will be very, very difficult for you to find a place that you can wash your clothes. So. Yeah. See, at the end. Yeah. See, at the end. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> So at the end, if you go to some places and you have some expectations and they don't have it, it's going to be very disappointing. Yeah. Well, about the accommodations and the things that you really need to do here in Cuba, there is another topic. Drinking water, something you must do, you must be aware of. I wish Holly would be here. <laughs> she has like a, like a bottle with a filter yeah. inside so you can even pick water here on the street, whatever. Even the river, if you go to the river, you can put the water in, 
in that bottle, you can drink it. Whoa, perfect. It's amazing. I don't know the brand. I wish I would <laughs> I would love having the brand here. Yeah. This video is sponsored by, but it's not <laughs> <laughs> so um when it comes to water, I think it's because the water in Cuba, I don't know what what it has, but you need to get used to it. Yeah, because it's not treated like on the, mm -hmm. in other countries. And if you uh, drink this water, like if you go maybe, you know, say, maybe not say. Yeah, it's Spanish. <laughs> Spanish. Uh, maybe not say. Um, and you go to the bathroom, I don't know, and drink this water from the pillow. From the top. From the top. You will be in very bad uh, stomach problems. So the point is, don't, don't drink top water. Yeah. Don't even get eyes from people you don't yeah. know. If you go to a bar, make sure that the bar is like for tourists because the eyes, the eyes is going to be made by natural water or water from, from the stores, basically. Yeah. But if you go to a place of a local that you just met and you want to be kind, whatever, hey, do you want, do you want a glass of water? Uh, no, thank you. I can't. Because if you drink the water, you're going to have a diarrhea for the whole day yeah and i have had that experience <laughs> recently <laughs> no more water but it is crazy when you're traveling yeah and having this situation and if you're alone in the middle of the street yeah with all that and pain. if you plan to travel within the island and you drink water and you are in a car whatever you're gonna be popping all day <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> so Don't the best option is to buy the water in the stores in the yeah. MLC store thing. actually if you go and for example if you stay in airbnb they yeah. must have water yeah. if they don't have go and buy five liters 10 liters of water so you're gonna have enough water to drink and if you don't have and you don't find trying to i don't know boil the water <laughs> yeah it's going to be the local way to drink yeah, the water yeah but it's going to be the best you don't want to have diarrhea in cuba yeah and I don't know if you want to talk about this. It's an article from Travel Pulse. It's the safest cities and countries for women to travel alone. I don't know if you want to talk about Cuba in this case or in I general. I wanted to talk about it because many people say that Cuba is very safe, which is, is true. Nowadays, it's a little bit more complicated yeah. to all the crises that we have. So people might be like very aware of traveling in general. But when it comes to Cuba, I was very surprised that it was not in this list. It was actually in the list. Well, it, it, this list is in a specific is for a woman to travel alone. Okay. So the places that they have, Western Europe and Scandinavia dominate ranking. Yeah. Scandinavia. Other destinations that made it into the top include Toronto, Ontario at number two, and Lisbon, Portugal at five. Orebro, Basteras, and Uppsala in Sweden. In Sweden. All tied for the number six slot, while Stockholm in Sweden came in at the other place. France, Cannes in France. Actually, um, France, um, Holly said that Paris, Paris is it's the very most dangerous. touristic. And it's very dangerous. Yeah. I don't know. They say a, a specific Cannes, where the festival is. And the others say Salzburg and Innsbruck in Austria. Pamplona and Oviedo in Spain. I don't know Pamplona with the festival with... Whoa. It's... Would you add Havana to this list? No. No? Why no. not? Well, recently I have a... Well, not me. A friend of us that came here from... From Netherlands, she is a woman, travel alone, and she came here and is staying in an Airbnb in Havana Center, Center Havana, and she have to move to the east, to the to the beaches in the east, because he don't feel safe. She doesn't feel safe. She feel like she was walking in the street and all the guys like uh, whispering and saying a lot of uh, disgusting things to her, and she doesn't feel safe in in havana walking by herself mm -hmm. she told uh, young and i that she was very um, safe walking with us she feels more comfortable because when she was walking by herself she feels so i don't know it, it, like all the people are annoying the, the men 
Mm -hmm. Of course, the men are are annoying her all the time. And I don't know if Havana, for a woman travel alone, that's the topic of this article. We're talking about all Havana or we're talking about Havana in general? Well, the... Because it depends about where you go. Exactly. I think it, this problem is uh, all Havana and Central Havana, because in Verado or Playa, mm -hmm. it's not the same. It's, yeah, of course. That's not going to happen there. No. It's uh, in these places, in all Havana and Center, because it has the most touristic and crowded uh, streets. It's a, it's a problem. Yeah. We were talking about it in the in the other podcast, about the, the Latin way to say that a woman is pretty, it's very hard and, and sometimes disgusting. the Cuban disgusting. version is very harsh. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Holly again, Holly would say like, that's the ghetto people. <laughs> but Holly, Holly loves adrenaline <laughs> and he's very strong, but some other, yeah. Yeah, some yeah, other women. If you women's... don't feel comfortable, that's, we understand that. Exactly. So try to avoid that situation, try to travel solo to Havana, or at least if you see a situation like this, try to put in stop, like, yeah. please. And don't walk alone in, in, I don't know, in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. But not in all the Havana and Center, in general, in all the places, you have to be very careful. Well, I'm very confused about that list. Yeah, yeah I, don't I don't know. know. They say, of course, Sweden, it's very, and Switzerland, it's our places, yeah, very, yeah. very uh, safest. But uh, I don't know, the Pamplona in Spain is so... I don't know. I don't know, I'll continue. What else? Well, travel insurance provider and the safest countries for a woman traveling alone comes as no surprise given the, the Netherlands, Denmark, Norway, Canada, Sweden, and Switzerland. What was the topic that you said that I wanted to talk about? Cancun and yeah, Mexico? Yeah, uh, top uh, travel destination of America, Cancun. Oh. Let me check about it, okay. Let me check about it again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Cancun. I know that Mexico is very well known for the tourism. And actually, I don't know right now, I have to do the research. But back in 2019, so in 2020, it was number one yeah. in Latin America. People, actually, Americans, they love traveling to Mexico, Cancun. Um, Tulum. I don't know if yeah. Tulum. And. Uh, they love Cuba as well, but it's not the same. No. This, the difference is going to be huge because a five-star hotel they're going to find in Mexico is going to be number one cheaper as it's going to be five-star. In, in Cuba... The five-star hotel are not they're five not, stars. They're not super good mm -hmm. at all. And actually, people who have visited Cuba, they say it is horrible. It depends about the hotels, of course, but as local as so many people, we go to Varadero. Yeah. And when you go there, you say like, wow this is not what I'm paying for. And it's expensive. So Mexico, yeah, it is great. Actually, um, it's one of the places where I would love to invest in the future. Having Amcor in there <laughs> and offering services there. I don't know. Let's see in the future. But that would be great. Yeah, I saw a lot of posts on Instagram about the Gran Cenote and Tulum. It's beautiful. And are very beautiful places. It's beautiful. It has so much variety. Like, you can do almost whatever. And it's huge, yeah. uh, Cuba. Mexico is huge, so you can do whatever. And uh, if I had a chance of visiting Mexico, I would stay there for a long time. Just for traveling and knowing the country and thinking about investing there. Okay, guys, that was it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening and watching. If you want to know more about this, you can go to amcrindlein.com. And actually, I want to thank to all the people who are supporting the content on buymeacoffee.com. Uh, hey, we have, <laughs> we, have little, Lucy here. Yeah, we have a little dog here, which <laughs> is beautiful. So I was saying that thank you so much to all of you guys for supporting the content. If you want to go to the link down below and buy it as a coffee, that's going to be helping us to keep creating content like this one. And Lucy sends you a hug. <laughs> and woof. So thank you, Gabby. Thank you, Alex. And see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. Ciao, Pacala with the picadillo with this panglage. <laughs> <laughs>